Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, and welcome to today's webinar on engaging children and youth with health research, case studies from Brazil, Kenya, and Vietnam. This, is, this webinar is brought to you by MESH, the MESH Community Engagement Network and the Global Health Network at the University of Oxford. Um, so this is a webinar, as I said, about uh, engaging children and youth in health research. Engaging, engaging young people in health research can have many objectives. For children and youth, it can increase their interest in science and can open out opportunities for careers in science. This can, over time, bring the population of scientists to better reflect the diversity of our communities and our world, thereby encouraging the practice of research that is relevant to everyone. <clears throat> for researchers and research institutions, it can familiarize them with the issues and concerns of our communities, once again supporting research to be more relevant to these concerns. Ideally, engaging children and youth empowers them by supporting their search for the information they need to make decisions for themselves and their communities. These are some of the common commitments of three school engagement projects in three countries, the Brazilian Health and, and Environment Olympics hosted by Fiocruz in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Oxford University Clinical Research Unit Vietnam Schools and Youth Engagement Program, and the school engagement program of the Kemri Wellcome Trust Research Program in Kilifi, Kenya. In this webinar, we will showcase these programs. Please join us to learn more about this exemplary work and to consider what learnings the experience of, of schools engagement might have for community engagement practitioners as a whole. People are still arriving. This is wonderful. Um, so I, my name is Himali Dixit, and I'm the Asia Coordinator for the MESH Community Engagement Network. Uh, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Vu Dui Tan, Vice Head of Public and Community Engagement, Oxford University Clinical Research Unit in Vietnam. Angela Chialo, School Engagement Program Lead at the Kemri Wellcome Trust Kenya, in Kenya. Tatiana Victoria Machado, Office of Scientific Dissemination, Vice Presidency of Education, Information and Communication at the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, Brazil. A quick, um, I'm just gonna walk us through the agenda very quickly. Um, we're going to hear for 10 minutes from each presenter. Tatiana will be speaking, uh, sorry, first we'll have Tan speaking on promoting a collaboration between young people and researchers on preparedness for key health threats. Then we have Angela speaking on engaging children and youth with health research, a case study from Kenya. Then we have Tatiana speaking about the Brazilian Health and Environment Olympiad. Then after that, we'll have a 20 to 25 minute question and answer session, and then we'll be closing. Um, just some housekeeping before we begin. First of all, this session is being recorded. Uh, the recording will be shared in the coming weeks on the Global Health Network platform so that you can review and share the materials. Please uh, for use the chat feature as you're doing so wonderfully right now. Use the chat feature for introduction or to report any technical issues you might be experiencing. The Global Health Network team will assist you with any technical difficulties. Um, because of the number of participants, your videos and microphones have been disabled. We're sorry that we we won't be able to take your questions verbally because of the number of participants. Um, but if you type them up in the question and answer box, we will be we will be tracking that. Um, once again, please any questions that you have, please put them in the in the question and answer box. Uh, as you can see in the in the slide over here, it's right between the participants and the chat. It's the two the two speech bubbles. That's the that's the Q and A feature. So if you can put your questions there. Um, we have a dedicated time allocated for question and answers, and during that time we'll try to get through as many question and answers as possible. If we don't have time for all your questions, we will compile them and, um, and work with our speakers, uh, our panelists, to have them answered afterwards, after the session. So we'll begin our program for today. First of all, I'd like to welcome um, Vu Duitan 
Tan is currently Vice Head of Public and Community Engagement at Oxford University Clinical Research Unit, Okru, Vietnam. He has led the development of Okru schools and youth engagement program to build the interest of young people in science and equip them with the capacity to engage their peers and researchers with the aim of contributing to a generation that values evidence-based approaches and scientific careers. Um, Tan oversees strategic directions for the, uh, for, this, uh, for the schools and youth engagement program. And he also has a, has a rich experience using participatory visual methods and facilitation skills to promote kinds of conversations and mutual understanding between groups of people, particularly young people. With that, I'd like to welcome Tan. Um, and thank you so much, Tan, for your presentation. Thanks very much, Hamli, for your introduction. So hello, everyone. Uh, I am Tan. I'm working at the Oxford University Clinical Research Unit based in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And I am responsible for leading the engagement with young people, which is one of our core programs for public and community engagement at Okru. And for our webinar today, I'm going to talk about how we promote a collaboration between young people and how researchers um, in a scientific -like setting. So at Okru, uh, our public and community engagement team, we work across uh, on our three host countries, including Nepal, Vietnam, and Indonesia. And we support our researchers to engage to enable partnerships with community where Okru research is taking place. We also create opportunity for young people to be involved. And why do we want to involve young people in our work? Because young people, they are making up a large proportion of the world population today. And young people and and the, the mature global health challenges such as and climate change or drug resistance or infectious diseases are happening. And young people, they are the ones who will live longer with the uh, health crisis impact. Um, however, young people in particular, like young people in low and middle income countries, they have very little opportunities to contribute to research, to participate in uh, strategic conversation or this is a making process that are relevant or affect the health and well-being. So at Okru, we are very keen to, to build our understanding, to promote effective ways of engagement and collaboration that make our work with young people more impactful and more meaningful. So what are our goals for engagement with young people? Um, in, in action, engagement with young people is not the only engagement at Okru. So we have colleagues who are doing engagement with other groups, such as like, they do real engagement with patients, with healthcare workers, with like, farmers, with like, specific community, communities in rural areas. Uh, and all aims to make like, Okro research like, more locally, locally relevant and accessible. And so one of our goals, one of our goals to work with young people on those collaborative efforts in order to make our research more uh, local, locally relevant and accessible. And we're also very keen to promote interest in science and, and build in science literacy for local populations. And fostering the youth involvement into the work of adults is not about having young people's participation in order to get, in order to have adults to get their work done for free or for fun. So we approach youth participation in a way that to make our work with young people more inclusive, more effective, and more sustainable. And we do this by building the capacity for young people and empowering them to take science as a way to improve health outcomes in their communities. And now I am going to introduce two examples of our work with young people and health researchers here in Vietnam. So the color plot, the first one. So this project initiated by a group of university students who joined Okru as our youth science ambassadors. So taking the fact that most of the research papers stay within academic community. So these young people, they wonder how can the public access to it? How non-academic people can understand the work that done by researchers. So driven by that thought and wanted to narrow that gap, narrow, narrow out that gap, uh, these science ambassadors, they set up the Colab Lab, which is a co-creation platform that brings young people and health researchers 
like working together to create useful like animation like videos you know that make my uh, research findings more accessible in addition uh, the team also want to generate responsive conversation in which they allow young people to be able to feedback about the work of scientists and also for scientists to to listen to the youth perspective about their work uh, through the mid the scientist events a series of mid the scientist events like, organized and led by the young people so here is kind of like the process of the key project status and um, young people they play main role in leading all the media productions and young people they also work very closely with the engagement practitioners and health researchers in order in in the design and delivery of series of engagement activities to the public So um, there were 11 animation videos created by young people, and six videos about the research at Okru, and another five video about research that done by local universities. And on this video were put online and received more than 21,000 reach on social media. So later I will show you one example of um, the color black videos. So our second example of how we involve young people in health research. So joining a collaborative study on pandemic preparedness, Okru is running a three-year project funded by the Welcome in order to um, establish a multidisciplinary research platform in Southeast Asia that like, for private assessment of biological significance of SARS-CoV-2 variants. And And this study enables, enables a room for involving young people. How do we do that? So we recruited a group of youth action research. Like we, we established a group of young people called youth action research, uh, which has 12 members from high school and universities. And these members, they joined the study team, uh, working together to create a framework that captures key stakeholders and engagement approaches with policymakers and pu the public concerning my future pandemic. So, um, and viewing from public engagement lens, your involvement in research means that a research is done with or by young people. And it promotes an active partnership between young people and health researchers in the research process Rather than using young be, rather than using young people as like supporter for data collection or for a research participant, and here, here are the key activities responding to the study. Goal number four, and young people they get involved from the outset. They play different roles at different like stages of the study, so they, they work very closely with the study team to identify the key stakeholders. They participated. In the series of consultation workshops, they offer the insight and feedback into the into the design process of the framework, and they also lead their own engagement around pandemic preparedness and community resilience. Yeah. Um, so what what were kind of like contributions that young people brought into uh, the study? So uh, the members of the youth action research participated in a series of like group discussions and analysis activities with the study team. So this teamwork has resulted um, a list of I'm sorry. So this teamwork has resulted a list of key stakeholders who played significant roles in managing or responding to the public health communications and policies during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And another essential significant output that created from young people, created by young people, is that they identified groups of people uh, who had uh, challenges and difficulties in terms, in terms of COVID-19 pandemic communications, uh, such as um, people with uh, disability, educators, uh, jobless people, or uh, unskilled labor. Yeah. And this is an ongoing project activities. So it means that uh, the youth team, the young people, they continue to have other meetings 
to uh, discuss the action plan and carry out their associate, associate activities uh, either with their team member or with the study team. So identification of the key stakeholders is the key required for the study team to get it done first before they can take any further step to form in, engagement approaches that respond to the stakeholders' concerns. Yeah, And uh, we had this work done together with young people. So um, a few reflecting points um, to the end of my, uh, my talk. So school and youth engagement is one of our key focuses for engagement at uh, our group at the Office University Political Research Unit uh, in Vietnam. And uh, we are very keen to keep learning uh, also to mobilizing like collective intelligence and collaborations uh, in order to strengthen um, this work in the field, in particular uh, around online engagement, evaluation and evidence, youth and policy engagement. And we hope we have a chance to, to collaborate with you in the future. And uh, we, we won't be able to do anything without like, a team. So thank you very much to my, like, my colleagues um, at the Office University Clinical Research Unit, Public and uh, Community Engagement. And just thanks to the contribution and involvement of our youth collaborators collaborator groups. Yeah. And um, now I will uh, show an example of um, one of the collab videos, which created by Yusan ambassadors and uh, Dengue researchers. Yeah. So Tan, we're at we're at ten minutes. Um, you, yeah. you wanted to show a video now? If I show video, can we show okay. now? Thank you. Sao theo dõi được hết tất cả bệnh nhân đây? Trước hết, hết, đừng sợ, đã có ai hỗ trợ. Xin giới thiệu, đây là công cụ hỗ trợ theo dõi bệnh số xuất huyết, hoạt động dựa trên thuật toán trí tuệ nhân tạo. Công cụ này được phát triển bởi đơn vị nghiên cứu lâm sàng Đại học Oxford, hợp tác cùng Bệnh viện Bệnh nhiệt đới và Imperial College London. Thiết bị này gồm hai thành phần chính. Discape là thiết bị được đeo trên ngón tay, dùng để đo các thông số như mạch, độ bảo hòa oxy máu và dung tích hồng cầu. Từ đó, Discap giúp phân loại mức độ nặng và tiền lượng bệnh của từng bệnh nhân. Sau đó, những thông số được chuyển sang hệ thống Discap trên máy tính. Sau khi nhận thông tin từ Discap, thuật toán trí tuệ nhân tạo sẽ kết hợp với các dữ liệu lâm sàng và xét nghiệm khác để phân tích rồi dự đoán khả năng diễn tiến nặng của bệnh nhân trong tương lai, nhằm góp phần hỗ trợ các quyết định lâm sàng của bác sĩ điều trị. Ồ, nghe hay quá! Vậy công cụ này đã và đang được phát triển như thế nào? Nhóm nghiên cứu đã sử dụng dữ liệu từ 8.000 bệnh nhân để phát triển thuật toán AI. Dữ liệu lâm sàng và sóng mạch từ 250 bệnh nhân sốt xuất huyết nhập viện, thử nghiệm thiết bị trên 50 bệnh nhân sốt xuất huyết và quan sát các bác sĩ sử dụng. Vậy thiết bị này đưa vào sử dụng rộng rãi trong các bệnh viện được chưa ý xa? Thiết bị ứng dụng AI trong theo dõi bệnh sốt xuất huyết vẫn đang trong quá trình hoàn thiện để nâng cao sự thoải mái cho người dùng và tối ưu tính khả dụng trong môi trường y tế Việt Nam. Isa có niềm tin rằng trong tương lai, thiết bị này sẽ hữu ích cho việc điều trị bệnh sốt xuất huyết ở Việt Nam, giúp làm giảm gánh nặng bệnh tật. Vậy các bạn có những ý kiến và gợi ý gì về thiết kế và tính năng của công dụng AI này không? Hãy chia sẻ cho Isa biết nhé! Thanks, Luis. Over to you, uh, Himali. Thank you so much, Tan. Um, so wonderful to hear about this work. Uh, so we're going to save questions for Tan until the end, and I'll go ahead and introduce our next uh, speaker, Angela. Uh, Angela Chalo leads the school engagement program at the Kemri Welcome Trust Research Program in Kilifi, Kenya. Uh, she is a holder of an education degree from Kenyatta University and a master's degree in education, health promotion and international development from, the, from University College London. Um, uh, Angela's goals in leading the school engagement program are to increase interest in science and health research among the students. And to do this, she draws on her experience of, uh, of in the fields of health research, education, public engagement, youth interventions to support innovation and excellence in the design, implementation, evaluation and dissemination, focusing on children and young people. Over to you, Angela. Thank you. Thank you so much Mandy, for the introduction and having me. Yeah, uh, I'd like to share the Camry School Engagement Program with us today. Um, it's a case for Kenya, 
and we are based in Kilifi. The school engagement program started way be before in over 10 years ago. And it was a response to community request um, during the community engagement uh, proceedings that students who are in secondary school can be given an opportunity to experience what happens in health research and with Camry. So over the years, um, Camry kept on um, working with schools. It initiated um, the program with three schools as a pilot to learn what the needs of the school would be and how a school engagement could look like. We've been able to expand and currently we are on over 30 schools and we range from primary schools all the way to secondary school. And we've been able to go through all these even during the COVID time, leveraging on both um, our physical sessions and our virtual sessions. And uh, the aim of this program actually is to increase an interest in science among students and to nurture uh, researchers, um, nurture researchers, sorry, please. Yeah, to nurture researchers appreciation of incorporating young people's voices in research. I think that's an area that is very important to have the youth voice in research. Next slide, please. So our approach is participatory in nature all the way from planning to implementation. We started, like we said, we started with having the teachers on board, the stakeholders, having continuous participatory involvement to bring on board everybody, plus the uh, resource persons to come up with strategies and activities that will bring the students on board and that will address their needs, both as students, but also as one of our publics and with a futuristic goal to, to build a body of students and young people who have an interest in science and who can continue being part of the research, both as researchers in future, as a career, or even informed participants in research. So our planning meetings include uh, the teachers. We work with contact teachers in every school, and we have to have a very good collaboration with the Ministry of Education and other stakeholders, first for permission and then for buying and also for purposes of continuity. And in case of in, in case of uh, very successful models, we also factor in in supporting, in leveraging uh, the stakeholders to support a scale up. Next. The, our implementation ranges from having lab visits. The lab, we bring the students to our premises within Kilifi. We have students engage in essay competitions, uh, students in primary schools doing modeling, modeling competitions and symposiums, young persons advisory groups, and I am a scientist. These are some of the online engagement that we have. And then we do have feedback sessions across the feedback se sessions is engaged with teachers and students just to understand what is their experience with the interactions between science scientists and the interaction between um, peers on areas that we, we really engage them in. So all, every time we are doing this, we also consider that these are students in as much as we may draw them to our research work. We appreciate that they're in school. And if they will love to take up a career in science, performance becomes key. Therefore, as we plan, we look at what is available, or what is planned in the curriculum, what is it that we have as Camry and our resource persons, and how can we meet in the middle? So that the, the learners have an opportunity to learn, and also the scientists have an opportunity to also uh, engage with students and also understand the needs of the various students. Uh, students in the areas of their research is one of the key public that we have. So the primary school engagement is one of the sector that we work with, and we are engaging with students that are aged between nine years and 13 years. That is uh, in our Kenyan context is class four to class eight, but now currently we can say grade four to grade nine. We have a presence in 15 schools within one county, that is Kilifi County. 
And our entry uh, strategy is using the club, the science clubs. Some have the science clubs, others can have health clubs. But if there's any club that relates with science or students have an opportunity to discuss matter science, they are welcome. The schools are given the opportunity to form the clubs. Our work is to engage the, the, the clubs through bringing in the scientists or working with the scientists, looking at the areas of collaboration, areas of study. And the session with the scientists help demystify science. Students have direct interaction with the science to understand, just to understand that scientists are normal people, scientists are available within our communities, and science is possible because people are that are within their communities are already engaging it. The participatory approach helps us to design uh, some of the activities that we have. Like I've said, being very careful that these, these students are also learning and they have goals to perform. So every kind of a uh, uh, activity we design, we ensure that there is a learning component. It is helping the students uh, strengthen their understanding of what they may have learned in class, but also it's, it's fun for them also to realize it is not so difficult, it's not so serious, but it's very possible for students to engage in science across with, either within classroom or even outside classroom. Our program is quite informal. We do not have the, the methodology, methodology teaching in the class, classroom situation, but we create experiences for the students to appreciate science. Some of the ways we do with the primary school uh, uh, students is to use the available uh, materials that our scientists develop. For example, we've been able to use the sickle cell uh, comic book that we engage with students across 10 schools and they were able to understand what sickle cell is, what research has done, what are the symptoms, and even what um, management uh, management of sickle cell should look like. And in case they know of a person, they even are aware the referral opportunities for students. So in such cases, for some of the research findings that we've had, and it's also um, an opportunity because after this, students were able to even go beyond just the sickle cell, and they were able to learn about blood, to model about the components of blood, and anything around blood. So it becomes like a one, one point where so much will happen, will open up the students, they will be able to, to diverse as much, to diverge to every uh, uh, topic of their choice, as long as they are supported with the scientists that we have in that session. Yeah. Um, the secondary school program is the, the next level that we engage with the students. We have over 40 schools that we work with. And the aim of engaging uh, students in secondary school is to strengthen their interest in, uh, in, in their interest in science. We do this by allowing them to visit our lab, uh, our labs interact with our scientists and also have career talks. We, ne we enable them to understand how what it takes to be a scientist and what they need to do to become a scientist in future. And if not, if they don't become scientists, how can they collaborate with scientists in the various fields that they are working in? Then we do have the Young Persons Advisory Groups. These are, we target like 20 students in nine school, secondary schools, and we like to develop materials that are, develop, uh, are, are friendly to help them understand the very basic principles of uh, ethic, ethic, research ethics and get them through um, basic understanding of concepts like consent, informed consent, clinical trial, uh, yeah, among other, other areas of uh, that affect or that are followed in research uh, science, in, in research. So we look forward to have wipe up sessions that are peer led, we want the students to be free to interact and also to look at what is it, uh, how does research happen and how safe is it and how can we participate and we've participate, what does it uh, in take for anybody uh, to participate? And next, yes, yeah, so, so we do have the online platforms that we do have, maybe just one more there. And we encourage scientists and, uh, and research researchers, scientists and students, they come on an online platform. 
it is the work of now the students to engage scientists on different uh, aspects and questions. It's a competition among the, uh, the, the students and scientists are given the task to answer students' questions. And after answering, the best scientists are given an award that they implement within a school is plowed back. Then lastly, we do have the school leavers attachment program that uh, targets students that have just finished form four, and they're taken through a three months, um, three months program, uh, attachment program within our premises. They interact with scientists for the purposes of shaping uh, their choices in career in careers as they go to the university. And we've been having over 107 students that have gone through this program. Out of those, those um, students, 75% of the SLAS alumni have been able to enroll in STEM-related courses. And among them, they enrolled in health, health research. Six of them are male and 40 of them are, are female. We will be having a lot of feedback about their experiences. The feedback I've just put them here, but I can say it has been very edifying and it's a, it's a program that uh, we are looking forward to scale even at the national level because of what we've been able to see as students take a career path and be able to uh, embrace uh, science and health research. And for those who are not able to do that, ability to understand that uh, science can be multi disciplinary and from what, whatever angle they can still be uh, su su support they can still support science and be in the arena of science as part of, of um, evidence kind of um, engagement. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, okay, and again, please share your questions for Angela in the Q and A um, in the uh, in the Q and A section at the bottom of your screen, there'll be a Q and A uh, section where we're sh where we've got a few questions already. Please share your questions for Angela there. Uh, now, I would like to welcome uh, our third panelist, um, Tatiana Victoria Machado, um, at uh, at the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation in um, in Rio de Janeiro. Tatiana is currently a PhD student in the philosophy graduate program at the Federal University of Rio de, Rio de Janeiro. She earned her master's and bachelor's degrees in philosophy at the same university. Um, her research interests encompass philosophy and health with an emphasis on environmental health and environmental education. Since 2013, she has been a member of the national coordination team uh, for the Brazilian Health and Environment Olympiad, um, within, which is housed within the Vice Presidency of Education, Information and Communication of the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation, also called Fiocruz. In her work, she engages in public awareness of science, as well as environmental health and education, and she promotes the United Nations 2030 Agenda. Welcome, Tatiana. Thank you, Imali. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's with us today. And I have a good news for everyone, no, not for everyone, just for me. I'm not a PhD student anymore because I finally finished it. So now I'm a PhD. I've been a PhD for a while and I'm an yeah. adult now. <laughs> so uh, I would like to thank everyone who received us today. I would like to thank the MESH Network and especially Mali News who made this all possible. And I would also like to thank Angela and Tan and for sharing our thoughts, sharing our hopes for the youth and for education in health. So uh, we have a little short movie about the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation that I think would be really good so we, we can start it with this and we talk more about it later. Saúde, direito de todos e dever do Estado Direito à moradia, ao emprego, à educação A um meio ambiente saudável, à água potável Ao lazer, à cultura Direito à voz e à paz Respeito à diversidade Saúde para a Fundação Oswaldo Cruz Abriga todas essas dimensões É assim desde 1900, uma visão integrada da saúde, na pesquisa, ensino, assistência, informação, comunicação, memória, na promoção da saúde, na inovação. 
onde permanentemente se pensam respostas para as necessidades da sociedade, onde se faz ciência em defesa da vida. Você pode até não saber, mas carrega a Fiocruz dentro de você. Desenvolvemos e fabricamos vacinas, medicamentos, biofármacos, testes para diagnóstico. Formamos pessoas do nível médio à pós-graduação. Realizamos pesquisas para superar ameaças à saúde, para diminuir riscos ambientais, para prevenir doenças e agravos. Pesquisas que beneficiam crianças, adultos, idosos. Uma instituição pública e estratégica de Estado, integrante do Sistema Único de Saúde, com uma rica história de contribuições à sociedade. Presente de ponta a ponta no Brasil, onde cada trabalhador é um elo forte e ativo. Nela, ciência e saúde cumprem uma função social para o país e o mundo. Somos bancada de pesquisa, somos sala de aula, somos serviços de assistência e promoção da saúde, somos átomos, somos moléculas, somos livros, teses, dissertações, somos conhecimento aberto, somos trabalho de campo. Somos Cruz, Chagas, Lutz, Rei, Scholl, Arouca, Berta, Sebastião, Herman, Adalto, Tirza, Joaquim Venâncio, Leônidas e Maria Dini, Aitimo Sachê, Joaquim Cardoso de Mello. Somos todos os nomes. Estamos nas matas, nos rios, nos córregos poluídos, na água que deve sair da pica, nos rostos das crianças vacinadas, nos passos firmes do idoso que caminha, nos olhos concentrados do profissional da saúde, naquele que lê, vê e acessa conteúdos qualificados, na mulher que exerce plenamente seus direitos, no jovem que descobre as possibilidades do mundo, no gesto que amplia o diálogo. Estamos no voo do mosquito, no invisível do vírus e da bactéria, no coração do bebê que pulsa na barriga da mãe, no leite materno que alimenta e protege, na visão do aluno que se abre ao conhecimento, na mão estendida que acolhe, na garganta de quem luta por direitos e igualdade. Afirmamos que a violência é indigna da condição humana, Defendemos que o desenvolvimento sustentável é a única resposta para um mundo mais equilibrado e menos excludente. Entendemos que informação e comunicação são direitos de cidadania que contribuem decisivamente para a paz. Acreditamos que o diálogo e o respeito entre os povos enobrecem as nações. Pés fincados na tradição. Olhos voltados para o futuro. Somos patrimônio da ciência e da saúde, da humanidade, do povo brasileiro. So guys, that's a little bit of what we do in Oswaldo Cruz Foundation for the past 124 years, well, not me, because I'm not that old, but, um, okay, now I hope you guys are sharing my screen, you can see a little bit of my presentation now, um, hopefully it's, okay, full screen. So, um, I'm part of a program that we are really proud of, the Brazilian Health and Environmental Olympiad, or as we call it, OBSMA. So we'll call it as we do in Brazil from now on, OBSMA. And um, as you can see, this Valdo Cruz Foundation is not only acts not only in the promotion of health and social development to the generation of scientific and technological knowledge, but also as an agent of citizenship. And it disseminates information and contributes to public awareness of science, as well as the improvement of public education in Brazil. So in this scenario, the Olympiad, the, the OBSMA, was created 23 years ago. 
to OBSMA, we concentrate the efforts of more than 30 researchers from units and offices throughout the country that wish to work with primary or elementary education. In Brazil, we call it education uh, basic, basic education. And our network today has more than 13,000 teachers who participate in OBSMA all over our country. So as we can see in our first slide, uh, OBSMA is a biennial educational program aimed at students from elementary and high school. It goes to promote Brazilian research and projects related to the cross curricular themes of health and environment, with the goal of connecting the school to the students' real life experiences, as well as to strengthen students the desire to learn and research on topics that contribute to the improvement of environmental and health conditions in Brazil while recognizing and rewarding the efforts of students who excel in those areas. We also hope to encourage students to pursue scientific careers and to strengthen strategies for sustainable development at all local, regional, and global levels, especially in regional levels. That's what we are actually focusing with our work. So beyond the typical configuration of a scientific or Olympiad, such as the mathematics, the physics Olympiads, including our competition rules, our modalities and categories. We view the program as a tool to comprehensively assess how teachers and students are organizing themselves regionally to discuss the most important themes and direct, that directly affect their daily lives. Additionally, it helps us understand the challenges faced by those schools, the strategies they employ to engage their students, the resources they utilize, the, the limitations and their strengths, most importantly, we get to understand what issues and questions Brazilian youth are raising when confronted with today's environmental and health challenges. Understanding how teachers and students are cultivating the relationship with the environment and public health within their communities and territories has led us to initiate several actions that we do believe are making a real difference in our country's education, such as the pedagogical workshops, and this workshop serves as meeting spaces for teachers to exchange experiences and collaborate on developing strategies for creating interdisciplinary projects. The available spaces for dialogue addressing themes such as teaching learning methods not yet integrated into the school's routine. We try to create creative dispersed for, you know, dialogue such. The workshops aim to provoke reflections and debates while stimulating teachers to create new ways of interacting with scientific knowledge. Since 2013, we had more than 120 workshops all over the country. Another one of our main activities are the Students in Action workshops that provide an opportunity for dynamic and interactive, interactive discussions uh, in the in such topics as science and environment, sustainability. It offers students the chance to take center stage in their own learning experiences, encouraging investigative practice and the discovery of new ways of interacting with knowledge. Given Brazil's vast geographical and educational diversity, our approach to activities must be dynamic enough to accommodate a range of territories and scenarios. This includes organizing students in action sections that can last from 15 minutes to entire days, with various activities such as debate clubs, audiovisual, audiovisual exercise, slam poetry sessions, visits to pupils labs, as well as a multitude of experiments and engaging classroom activities. To those activities, our aim is to raise awareness about the most pressing issues affecting our country. Finally, newly introduced this year, the Mentoring at School Scholarship Program offers 60 OBSMA winning students the opportunity to undertake a science project with access to various research and teaching facilities. Participants will be introduced to principles of public health research at Pilkus, where they will learn about biosafe concepts and lab practice. So it's a new chance for the students not only to be engaged after they win the OBSMA, but also to Keep, uh, uh, keep being introduced in the lab practice and how we do science in Brazil today. So if I have, I, I have another minute, Rimali, or have oh, more ideas? If you, if you can finish up in a minute, that would be great. Thank you. Just one minute, please. So I would like to talk blessing about the special award Obsma offers to projects developed by groups entirely formed by women, cis or trans women. It should be obvious, but we are 
like to doesn't hurt to bring attention to it. But our special award Go Today Scientist Tomorrow has been a part of our award since 2018. This year, we are paying homage to Alda Falcão, a black woman scientist who at only 14 years old was already conducting research to combat the malaria epidemic in her region, in her city, and she dedicated her whole life to the study of leishmaniosis. And we hope to inspire more young women to become future scientists by introducing this award in, in our competition, in our Olympiad. So that's a little bit about the work we do uh, with OBSMA. I want to thank you all so much for the attention and I really hope to contribute with the discussion today. That's our main, uh, our official website and that's our contact, how you guys can contact it later. Well, thank you, I'm sorry, it's a little bit of time. Thank you so much, Tatiana, for sharing about this wonderful work. Um, so we will now take questions for the participants. Uh, we already have uh, some questions lined up for Tan and Angela. Uh, please, uh, please put your questions to Tatiana in the Q&A section. Um, just click on the Q&A uh, button and uh, write up your questions for Tatiana there. Um, okay, so we're going to go into question and answers now. We are, uh, we only have about um, seven minutes before the one hour is over, but we have uh, decided to go 15 minutes over, if that's okay with the panelists, is that okay? Um, I hope you can stay for another 15 minutes so we can take some questions. Uh, okay, so um, the first question is for Tan. Uh, it's from Thi Lan Vu. Um, thank you, Tan, for your presentation and the amazing work that this group has done. You mentioned a lot about youth ambassadors, so I'm wondering if they also brought science into their schools as well. Okay, Tan, I think I'm going to take a few questions for you and I'll give them to you all at once. Uh, so this is the first question. Did the youth ambassadors also bring science into their schools? Um, you, d you didn't mention much about collaboration with local authorities responsible for promoting science in your presentation. So my question is, has, have you or has OKRU collaborated with schools and local authorities, for example, the Department of Education or the Ministry of Education, to make the impacts more nationwide and to ensure the sustainability of the work? So the question is, have you collaborated with schools and, and the Department of Ed and local authorities, for example, the Department of Education, in order to ensure that this, this spreads nationwide and becomes more sustainable? That's question number one. Mm, uh, question number two, I think, is... Uh, uh, so, Tan, I'm going to... Oh, there was another one for you, which I can't find. Um, okay, wait, there was, there, was another, there was another question for Tan, which I can't find. Maybe... maybe uh, Maybe let me just uh, give you that. And then uh, another one is also more general. Maybe Tan, you can also ask, answer the more general one too. The next question is, what are some of the ethical issues encountered in recruitment of children in youth engagement for research? Any advice on what needs to be done to overcome these challenges? So if all our speakers can also think about this, what are the, some of the ethical issues that we encounter when we're working with children and youth? Um, for in, in engagement for in research engagement and how do we overcome them okay so tan maybe if you could if you could just answer the questions directed at you and then we'll slowly move on to some other questions yeah sure i think um lang thanks for your questions um you, you i think now you have two questions i think uh, in, ter in terms of like working with the ambassadors in order to bring science to their to their school, um, I think this is our plan, and we plan to uh, to do that with the Color Lab initiative, uh, led which is led by the ambassador this year. So uh, this year we have a plan for the ambassador to uh, to organize a series of like meet the scientists event at their universities, which given a chance for them to to introduce about their work, also to bring my like, uh, researchers to back to the university and have like conversation with their with their with them my like, their peers. And the second, the second question uh, around the partnership with uh, school and local authority in order to promote science in school. Yes, we do. Uh, yes, here at Okru, we do acknowledge and recognize the uh, essential partnership with uh, local authorities, in particular Department of Education, in order to promote uh, science in school. Uh, we also think that uh, supporting uh, 
teacher's capacity is a, one of the most like, sustainable way in order to uh, create a uh, sustainable platform for the school children to be able to interact and, uh, and learn about science. And, and actually, we have been like, um, working a lot with like, multiple, like, uh, uh, multiple, uh, multiple departments of education across like, the country. Uh, but however, within the scope of our like present presentation today, which mentioned which is about youth involvement, so I didn't have a chance to talk much on and the partnership with like local authorities and school and also the Department of Education. So hopefully there will be another chance for for us to to um, to introduce or to talk uh, to you more on that like uh, on that work. And for the uh, for the general question on around ethical considerations when uh, we involve young people in research. So from from my view, I think like when we involve like children or, or young or young person in in research, uh, we we can there are a few things to consider. How can we ensure that children uh, not be harmed by involvement in our research activities, and how can the research team respond to the children when they become obsessed while participating in our like research activities, and what is the level of decision making process between the children and the research teams related to their Involvement, and in order to uh, in order in order to um, overcome these like challenges, I think like having a public engagement component within the, the study and can be one of can be one of the solutions the, sol the one of the solutions in order to reduce like these considerations around ethical like, issues. Yeah, that's my view. Okay, great. Thank you, Tan. Um, so uh, also for the other speakers, if you can please uh, think about that and also answer that question when when it's when we move to you about what are the ethical concerns when it comes to working with children and young people and how do you address them. Also to add to that, there's another question saying what uh, do you encounter challenges obtaining authorizations at the country level, the regional level or the district level to implement these kinds of activities, given that they're with children in primary and secondary schools. Uh, so what is also the challenge about authorization? So Angela and, and Tatiana, if you can just keep that in mind. Um, so first of all, the ethical challenges, how to overcome them. Secondly, the authorization challenges. So that's, uh, that's, that's one set of questions for both of you. Thank you so much, Tan, for your, for your answers. And now there are some questions for Angela specifically. Um, let's see. Uh, one question is, uh, uh, Angela, I noticed you are localized in one area of, uh, of Kenya, the coastal area. Is it necessary to expand to the entire country since we have aspiring young scientists all over? Uh, and somebody has said, I, Mar Mar that's from George o Omondi and Mar 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 Marcreen Adiambo has said, I second this. Um, next for Angela, um, uh, can you please share with us some of the if it's from Chris Garang Mol, uh, Bol Malik? Can you please share with us uh, what's uh, what were some of the challenges you have faced, how you have overcome them? Uh, next, Ida uh, Ayu Sutrisni. Uh, sorry if I am not pronouncing these names right. Um, just a technical question: uh, When doing engagement with primary school students, do we need to collect informed consent from their parents? Um, next. Yeah, again, the next question is about consent as well. Uh, and uh, this is from Felicita Tarimo. And how does the community take part in supporting the activities that you are doing? Have you explored the parents or community's opinion on the same as well? Um, if, uh, sorry, I'm just going to continue to just leave this one more question for Angela. How is the process of negotiation with the Ministry of Education and what is their influence also in recruiting the students? Do they get to approve of learning materials or, con or the content? And how is the integration to the school curriculum in general being done? So once again, a lot of these questions around, are around ethics, around uh, consent and around authorization. Uh, please, Angela. Thank you so much. Uh, I will start with uh, the obtaining of authority because if I address that, it will sort out so many things. Yes, for us to work with any school and any student, the starting point is to work and inform the Minister of uh, Education. There is a policy that guides how partners engage in schools. And currently, the actual authority is being sourced at a national level. So we have different 
different levels of engagement. First, we inform the Minister of Education within the county that for a lengthy and also uh, more authority, authority uh, to operate, we've been able to go all the way to the national level, engaging, uh, getting permission from the um, permanent secretary or PS, yeah, the permanent secretary education. That's the only place you can get that kind of a permission to work with, with schools in Kenya. Then at the county level, you now bring the letter of organization, but we keep on briefing uh, the, the leadership there for them to understand what you are doing, but also to for them to give us uh, the backup to engage schools. They introduce us now to the schools and the head, heads of the school are aware that we are uh, allowed to operate with them. Uh, there are two levels of, of government permissions. First is with the students. The policy, Minister of Education is a policy holder. We have to work with them to give us permission to work with schools. But we also have to work with the Teacher Service Commission to give us permission to work with teachers. So there are different levels of engagement and we are very keen. And they are, they, we are very keen to work with them as they should be. And it's very well provided with with the government ministries on how to engage so. So when you are recruiting, uh, once we are given the opportunity to work with, the most important thing we, we do next is now to request the schools to give us contacts, to contact teachers. These are the teachers that will be communicating every other uh, time when you're planning and when you're giving feedback to, to schools and to students. And these are the contact teachers that now we work with to plan and design the school-based activities and look at the school calendar, how it looks like. Um, about um, working in Kilifi, in one area in Kenya, yes. We've been in Kilifi for the, for the longest time because this has been uh, one of our uh, school engagement is one of the platforms or strategies for community engagement. And initially uh, the research program was domiciled in Kilifi. However, we've been having a conversation with the national government to look at how the same programs, especially the successful models, can be scaled up or even replicated in the 14 centers that Camry works. So yes, it's a process, it is slow, but it can happen um, with, with, with more uh, collaborations and with more kind of a follow-up, even though it is resource-based. So at one point, we felt engaging with the headquarters would be good, especially if, there are budgets that are provided within the different uh, stakeholders. Then about informed consent, yes, it, it, it's, it's still a question. We do have informed consent. Uh, we request for students, um, for, stu for students, uh, one way of doing it is that schools can allow us to engage st with students in some of the activities, especially the one of activities and and the, and the group activities that we do with as long as we have permission with with the ministry however there are specific activities like uh, the white packs that we had to request them to take their their the their informed consent to be signed by parents so at one point when we go to a school and we're given permission to work with uh is as, as long as you're not doing a study with the students it's just engagement the school and the principal allows us and they can do a consent for them, for, for, for the students. However, if it's a student that is going to, to engage more deeply with specific activities or research activities, we request now further our, our consent to be signed by, by the parents. Anytime we have an activity with the students, um, because we deal with different students, we ask them to sign for consent, especially for photographs, and we have to inform them why they are signing. Because at the point, uh, we also wanted to know, do they really care about it? So it's one thing we educate them, and then we request the students to sign assent forms, actually, if they assent forms, and we tell them it's the purpose of our, of our reporting. So what, what are some of the key challenges that we, we, we face? We do face, challenges with the calendar of schools. Uh, uh, we, across the country, partners are not allowed to work within school hours. So what we do, we really balance on the extracurriculum time that is provided by school. So as a, as a team, we find ourselves getting late to the schools because 
the earliest you can engage the students is three to five. For boarding school, it can also be tricky because of their program in the afternoon. So time is, a, is of essence, but it calls for a lot of investment in planning so that we can, we can have it. Then for planning with teachers, we request that we can meet teachers outside uh, working hours. It has a cost implication also, but it's a bit amicable when we have like set up time, like off, off hours, like weekends once in a while, or when the schools are closed. We have to know how to come around uh, that. But again, we call in uh, for those ideas and they ask us how to go about it, yeah. Great, Angela, thank you so much. That's yeah. so useful. sorry. I think what we'll do is we'll save uh, we'll save some of these questions and I'll I, I'll be in touch with you afterwards and then we'll uh, if we can communicate about the answers we'll make it available to the participants because I'd like to save five minutes for our last panelist. Um, thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, so Tatiana, um, so one is the ethics question that 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 you've already uh, that you've already heard, and then um, one pa one participant wanted you to elaborate a bit on the on the mentorship. Uh, um, and, and then there's a question for you about um, from Anna Markin. Um, do you, Fear Cruise, have a specific program for kindergarten te children to teach them about how to create good habits and avoid tropical diseases like dengue? Um, yeah, uh, that's 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 the third question for you. Thank you. Thank you, Imali. Um, I think I'll start from the last one because it would be the easy one to to answer. So. I'm so good to see another Brazilian with us today. Hi, Anna. So um, to answer your question, we do have a lot of study materials and study courses prepared in Osvaldo Cruz Foundation, especially for such age. So we have um, materials and, and games and, and a lot of things that are prepared in our educational programs in Fio Cruz. They are aimed for the smaller children for younger for the younger public we uh, try to make them being we try to introduce those such materials to the school so uh, that's kind of also the answer for the ethics question because um we have uh, in in brazil we have a policy that it's called the foundations for a national common curricular and uh, uh, base national curricular Commun and at that policy will um, introduce health and environment as a curricular team that uh, must be must be faced by all disciplines in in our curricula. So we try to uh, so uh, to the foundation for national common curricula, we have already. Uh, understood that we have to treat uh, such things in health and environment. So we have already have this path inside the school. So we got we have a, a little bit of an easier time not having to actually speak with the students directly before because we always get this the way with the school. So um, when we have to have documentation like Authorization for the use of images or for the use of their works, we all, we do it to the schools and to the uh, municipal and state uh, education secretaries because they all have, they already have the uh, the whole curriculum is is already made for um, inserting health and environment programs in, on it. So with the Younger students, we do it to the schools. We do. Uh, we have a lot of materials that will be specially made for such students, but uh, we don't actually do the the. We don't actually uh, apply such materials. We have the. We the whole school will will be engaged in in this work, but we do a lot of materials, a lot of of courses and a lot of games, especially for younger students. About the mentoring in Brazil. So uh, we still have a big problem in Brazil about school dropouts. And 
mentoring is not only an effort to have more students engaged in scientific careers, but also to avoid schools dropouts, especially after the pandemic, and especially young girls, because they get overwhelmed with the um, uh, with the 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 domestic affairs, the domestic uh, uh, work, and much more than the young boys, and they drop out of school much more than the young boys, also because of uh, pregnancy in the young and in the early ages, uh, the early years of teenagers. So uh, that's why we uh, have to see in so many of our students, even the students that are actually winning big competitions as the Obsma competition, actually dropping out of school for many problems for me for not having enough um, incentive in, in, in their homes, uh, for not actually picturing a future to education. We started the mentoring program and it's our first year. So we're still um, actually seeing how, how we are going to impact the lives of such students. But we are uh, trying to create an environment where they can uh, understand a little bit more about uh, health public system, the SUS. Okay, the, you heard a, big, a little bit about it on our video presentation. And uh, so they have to learn about the SUS. They have to learn about uh, how to engage in, in, public res in public health researches. And, and they get to actually feel they are part of a bigger work so they can act, we actually believe that they will be engaged in, in research even in the early ages, even the teenage ages. And I can tell you guys that this really changed lives because that was how I started at Fiocruz. I started at Fiocruz at 14 years old and I had a scholarship and that it changed my life. I was the first one for my family to actually get to graduation and finish it. And now I'm still working at Field Cruz and I'm still in it and I got my PhD finally. So uh, I, I think that, that we really believe that really changed lives because uh, we're not, we are not only, it's not just about the scholarship, the, 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 the money they get with the scholarship, but actually the, the, Things about we have to how we get to actually show them that we believe they can do research, that they can be researchers, that they can uh, even at uh, the teenage years uh, actually uh, engage with the things they they need, the things they 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 uh, the the questions of health and and, and science environment that are really uh, impacting their lives. And that they are the only ones that can talk about their community, their demands, their, their future. So uh, it, the mentoring today is about that. It's about actually empowering this, the youth and showing that we believe that they uh, can contribute for a better and more fair country. So I think that's about it. I'm sorry for my broken English. Thank you so much, Tatiana. And I think that's a beautiful note to end on how how life changing these opportunities can be. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, this it reminds us uh, how ins how inspiring so much of this work that we've heard about today is, and especially that you're a product of the of Fear Cruz's youth engagement program. That's just really, really beautiful to hear. Um, and congratulations on your PhD. Thank you to all the speakers. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Everyone, we had a very high attendance uh, on this call, and we're really, really happy about that. And, uh, and we hope that this contributes to um, we hope that this contributes to much richer conversations uh, over the coming months and years and that this builds and, and that we that we yeah, that we that we all through these conversations learn uh, more about um, most effective engagement practices, and also that we start, that we pay more attention to uh, to the young people who make up the majority of the world's population, as Pan has reminded us, and who will be uh, living with uh, this with 
a health crisis for far longer than than some of the rest of us. So thank you everyone for your participation in this webinar and thank you Angela, Tatiana and Tan. Um, we've received many comments and questions. We didn't get to all of them. So what we'll do is, as we said before, we'll gather them together and we'll ask our panel, our panelists to respond to these in writing. Um, I hope I hope you all will be available for that. Um, the recording of this session, uh, uh, along with additional materials, will be shared. The link, uh, uh, the link to which you will be, um, so the link at which you can get that is posted in the in the chat. Uh, Louis, can, Louis, that link, the link uh, where the where the uh, webinar will be posted. Oh, that that is this. No, where's the link where the webinar will be posted? Okay. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so Louis just posted the link. So that link, um, that's the link to Mesh's website, and that's where the materials will be posted. Um, and and before I let you go, we would really love. Uh, so Mesh is um, the 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 mission of Mesh is to uh, build uh, stronger networks and stronger com conversations around community engagement. <clears throat> and this call is a part of that work. Uh, so we would really love to be in touch with you. We would love for you to. Um, uh, we would love for you to register with us so that we can so that you can be on our mailing list so that we can tell you about upcoming events and that so that we can engage uh, better on these topics. Uh, the if you look at the slide right now, that is the 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 link at which you can uh, register on on the mesh website. Also, if you just go to the mesh website and you click on the get started tab, that'll give you a simple a very simple registration form. And if you can also like use the map to show us where you are, that's also a fun interactive tool that we have. Um, so that said, thank you very much uh, to the panelists and to all of you for your participation and all the wonderful questions you asked. Uh, we will now close the session. Good. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, and we will see you soon.